2016 for me, I would say, was by far my most successful year as a mixed martial artist. Obviously, I took an Anderson Silver, then I won the belt, and then I defended the belt in my hometown. So yeah, you know, it doesn't get better than that. So it was Christmas Eve, and I was initially supposed to fight Gay God Musasi in London, February 27th. And I'm at home, and I get a phone call, and I look at the phone, and it's Dana White. Dana's awesome, but he doesn't generally call me on Christmas Eve to say Merry Christmas. So on this occasion, I'm like, oh, wow, that's uh, very friendly of Dana saying Merry Christmas. So I answer the phone, I'm like, hey, boss, how you doing? Merry Christmas, all that good stuff. And he says, listen, we've got a change of opponent. We want you to fight Anderson Silva in London. Of course, I agreed instantly right then and there on the spot. I'd always wanted to fight Anderson Silva, especially when he was the champion. I always felt I had a style that could beat him. Uh, a lot of people thought I was crazy, but when I looked at Anderson, I thought I could beat him. And in my mind, when Dana called and switched the opponent from Gegard to Anderson Silva, at that stage of my career, I'd had a lot of fights, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of injuries. So this was a chance for me to go out there and fight Anderson Silva in my backyard, in my capital city, and get a win towards the end of my career. So for me, yeah, this was a massive opportunity. You're the man in the house while I'm gone. Uh -huh. Don't, don't, you know, let this place fall into ill repute or disrepair. Ellie, mom's leaving. You will be the woman of the house until grandma arrives. No, it didn't take flight. Oh, harder, harder, come on. Still does the same thing to this day. Uh, me or Anderson Silver? And the Mr. Right thing. What? <laughs> no, who's going to win? And the Mr. Right. Because he's the champion. Whatever it is, if there's a side to take, or if there's anything in life that goes against me, then Lucas will go against me. And he still does it to this day. So of course, if you ask him then, or you ask him now who's going to win in a fight, he will always say my opponent, and I love him for it. <laughs> Anderson Silk is not gonna win. Yes, he is. Anderson Silk is not gonna win. <laughs> right, come here, Pat. Let me see if I can pick you up. Okay. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> What's your problem? You're tickling me. I'm not tickling you. Come here. Certainly could not do that now. Power. Challenge me. Anderson, be a prick. <laughs> Just great, you know, seeing the, those old footage, the old, those old tapes, you know, it just brings it all back. You know, I, I was very lucky. I lived a blessed life for a long time. I was able to live the dream, do everything I want, you know, and uh, as I say, I feel very lucky to do that. I was able to give my family a great life, you know. Uh, came with a lot of sacrifice and hard work, but I wouldn't change a damn thing. What are you doing? What is that? What are you doing? Are you trying to intimidate me? Ain't gonna work on me, pal. Oh dear. They're gonna work on me. I'm not intimidated. I'm not scared of an old 41 year old. You need a tissue. Anyone got a tissue for Anderson? I think he needs to blow his nose. You need to blow your nose, son. He does look cool, though. I'll give him that. Oh! Come on, Anderson. Come on. Respect martial arts. Ah! I'm such a wind up merchant. See, buddy, the champion, everybody. Well done, my friend, well done. I don't know why it was hostile with Anderson. I love the guy. I've got tremendous respect for him back then and even still now. But for me, when I was facing Anderson, of course, you know, Anderson's had a great career. One of the best ever, if not the best. I'd always put him on a pedestal. Now bear in mind, I was a pedestal that I wanted to knock him off. So I had to strip him down mentally in my mind. I couldn't give him the respect that in all reality, he is due. If I went into that cage, you know, full of reverence for the guy and respect and, and thinking that this is the great Anderson Silva, oh my God, oh, I love you. I'm not gonna perform to the best of my ability. And I'm not there to kiss Anderson Silva's ass. I'm there to kick it, simple as that. So when the fight's done, yeah, then we can shake hands, then we can hug, we can embrace, we can do Instagram pictures, we can do whatever the fuck you want. But up until the referee holds my hand up in the air and says that I'm a winner, you're my enemy. And especially if you're gonna stand there like a prick, by the River Thames and try and fucking showball like that, then guess what? It's on, baby, let's go. It is now 
now or never for the perennial contender if he's to get that elusive title shot. For him, it is the biggest fight outside of a title fight right now. Luke Rockhold, very close to the action, checking out this fight. <laughs> well, here it is, Dan, the main event of the evening. Yeah, at this point, I'm like, my God, you know. Herb Dean is tasked with overseeing this main event. With the referee saying fight against Anderson Silva. This being back in Anderson up to the fence. Anderson still Anderson, he's still very slick, but look at that! Good head movement again from Anderson Silva. Looking very confident. I was trying to land on him in this first round, of course, but he is quick, he is Anderson Silva. Still got the reflexes. Landed a good one oh. there, and then another one, and he just had to touch the floor there. Anderson looked wrong for a second, but he's fired up. Well, look at that, there we go again. See, that's prime Anderson, right? He knows I just landed a good shot on him, and he's coming up to give me a congratulations, to give me a hug and a, say, wow, good for you. You landed a glove on the great Anderson Silver. I want to give you a hug. I'm like, fuck off. Michael Bisping needs to be confident in his bunch placement. If the hesitation will cause him to miss. So again, look, here he is with his against the fence bullshit. Oh, boom. Oh, and again nice. with that tuck. Anderson goes down for a second. Good uppercut from Michael Bisping. Michael's pouring up the pressure. We're hard on the left hook with him being a southpaw. Landed perfectly, put him down. Felt feeling very confident here, landing some good shots. This is exactly where Michael wants to be going into the third round. Very good spatial awareness there at the end of that round from Michael Bisping. Yeah, and then from here in round three, it's just a case of just continue what I'm doing. Just keep the focus. The focus is the primary thing. Oh, another good jab from Michael Bisping. Good head movement from Silva that time. You can't allow any external influences to take your eyes off the target. Of course, that is Anderson Silva, and that external influence could be a mouthpiece. <laughs> that mouthpiece has just hit the floor there. You see Herb Dean just picking it up, and I'm like, you know, they say Brits have bad teeth, but I'd still like to hold on to mine. Oh, it's very ready. nice and done. Oh, jump Shoot me. Me. But I'm like, Herb, for fuck's sake, give me the mouthpiece, please. Okay, this eye is jacked, so if I'm over there, like, I don't see my hand, so I don't see Anderson. And then when I looked back, he was in the air, boom, hit me in the face. He, he knees me, I hit the floor. You can see that. I am not unconscious, I am crawling, I am getting back to my feet. This narrative that you assholes online say that I was unconscious, shame on you. Shame on you, look, clearly not unconscious having a fucking conversation with the referee. I say to him, I'm not out, and he says, yeah, the fight's not over. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Now we've got Anderson Silva clearly trying to sell a victory that he knows he hasn't got. He's up there, I don't know what he's trying to sell, but if the fighting doesn't work out for Anderson, a salesman career is definitely in the making because he's fucking selling this one big time. But now Bisping has seen his cornerman, Jason Perillo. He knows he is still in the game. He thought he won a fight, but then had to go back into round four. The poor guy, the adrenaline dump he must have had. Could you imagine the adrenaline dump of someone taking a cheap shot and opening up your face and my face falling apart and blood going everywhere? I think that adrenaline dump might be a little bit worse than what Anderson was going through. Bisping forcing Silver's shoulders up against the fence. Bisping is not giving Anderson Silver an inch here. Here we go, this is what we signed up for. Feeling good here, landing some good combos. Anderson knows he's got to put on the pressure a little bit here though. But again, having a good round, even though my face, as I say, he is falling apart. Michael Bisping is, is finding his range here. Good head movement here. Possibly looking to find the finish towards the end of this round. A good knee, Michael Bisping pushes him off. I was trying to get a finish here because, as I say, you know, the, 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 the blood was getting bad and it was really restricting my vision. I couldn't really see anything. Fifth and final round here in London. Again, I won that round, so I would say I'm up rounds one, two and four. Anderson Silva versus Michael Bisbee. An aggressive Anderson Silva looking oh. for that finish. Once Fires again, the high kick. puts it behind the left hand. Forcing Silva back against the fence once again. Michael Bisping is landing shots here. Oh! 
Drunk kick from Anderson Silva. Michael Bisping was wrong, but stays on his feet. Yeah, that was a big one. Beautiful front kick from Anderson there. That's the one that he knocked out Vitor Belfort with. Anderson Silva closes the range. Three minutes to go. His hurts. All right, John, steady on, bud. I'm not that hurt. <laughs> I was hurt, though. Blood everywhere. We're still firing back. As I say, Anderson knew he had to find a fish. This was a tough fight. I mean, this fifth round, you know, it took a lot. It had, you know. This thing revs up his efforts towards the final bell. Faces falling apart, covered in blood. But I'm in London, the nation's capital, biggest fight of my career. If you think I'm going to quit, then you're out of your goddamn mind. All three judges have scored this contest 48 47. For the winner. At this moment here, I kind of, I was quietly confident. I thought I might have it, but you never know with the judges. I thought I've definitely got it four rounds to one, possibly three rounds to two. By unanimous decision, Michael Bacalt Yeah, I know it felt good. I mean, Anderson Silva is a legend of the sport. I, I never had any ill-formed opinions of Anderson going into that. In fact, it was the opposite. I had tremendous respect for him. You know, that was by far the biggest win of my career. I had to fight through that adversity in the third round and, you know, show some heart, show some will, some grit. I'm glad I had to do that. Been working on kind of an acting career for a while, doing auditions, driving up to LA, you know, walking in a room, making a fool like yourself, trying again, audition, audition, audition. That's just the way it goes. And I actually auditioned for a part on Triple X, the new Vin Diesel movie. While I was on set on UFC Tonight, I get a phone call when we went to commercial break from my agent saying, okay, you've got the part, but the only thing is you're gonna leave this Sunday. I'm like, oh, wow, this Sunday. Okay, well, first off, that's great news. How long's the shoot gonna be? And they say, three months. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Not sure that's gonna go down with the wife too well. So I call her up and I lie, obviously. <laughs> I tell her, I say, yeah, the shoot's gonna be like two or three weeks tops. I say, oh, great, great, great opportunity. But, you know, things get delayed. Do you know what I mean? The weather, you know, bad traffic. Whatever. It is what it is, just things were just... The, the, the shoot just got way behind schedule. Funnily enough, ended up taking three months. Couldn't believe it. It's getting near to the end of the shoot. I'm going to the gym, just have my morning, you know, have a little work. I'm going to be on set later, so i got to look good. As I'm walking in the gym, bing, bing, bing. Dana White calls me, so we start talking about the fight. We negotiate, you know, some terms a little bit on the phone. And, uh, you know, Dana says, congratulations. And that's it, the fight's set. So the first thing I do is I rush to the scale. I get on the scale, it's like 217 pounds. And I think this is the Friday, two weeks before, yeah. So this is 15 days out. I'm like, oh my God, 31 or 32 pounds. I'm like, oh, never mind the weights. I've got to run, so I throw my backpack on. As I'm running through the city centre of Toronto, sidestepping people, jumping over homeless people, nearly getting run over by taxis, the doubt starts to set in. I hate talking about myself in the third person, but in true Michael Bisping fashion, I get a title fight on two weeks' notice against an opponent that's already beaten me. All in all, this doesn't, you know, paint a very good picture for me becoming world champion. And as I say, I started feeling very, very doubtful. And as I'm running, I called Jason Perillo, my boxing coach. He said, you've been preparing your entire life for this fight. You just beat Anderson Silva a few months ago. He said, we can win this fight. So that's what we did. And I put the phone down. I was like, okay, let's go win a fucking world championship. Have you got something nice to wear to the fight? It's the big, this is the big question. Dude, I need to show you that I have to prove it. Every single time. It, there, there was more thought went into her outfit for the fight than there was my preparation for the fight, let me tell you. Yes. Like, I haven't got enough on my plate. I have to approve her outfits. <laughs> it's not hard. It's pretty standard stuff. I know, but it's painful. Hey. Harry, come on. You want to come with us, pick up the little guy? You do realize that you've turned into a full-on OC housewife. Michael, I'm bringing Harry. Look! She's got a 
Pull pee on a lot for crying out loud. We hate those silly cows that drive around. I didn't say no, no, no. <laughs> normally, when you're driving, you have him on your lap. You know how dangerous that is. What's up, Harry? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Do not. <laughs> Harry, <laughs> little Harry. Bless him. While I'm driving, you little shit. It's not gonna... safe. It is not safe at all. I wish I could just drive around with a little cute puppy on my lap. Here he is, the little shit. Did you know I'm fighting to be the world champion, Lucas? Yeah. Who wins? I think he, because he might be stronger. He might be stronger? Yeah. All right, but well, never mind that. <laughs> there's, there's one champion right now, and that's Luke Rockhold, and I get to fight him. You think, for the sake of the camera, he could lie? He, because he might be stronger. <laughs> no, he should be. No faith, no confidence, no love. <laughs> no! <laughs> Who's going to win? Yep. Yeah. I wouldn't change it, though, to be honest. It's awesome. It's funny. It's just the relationship we have. What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming out today. We appreciate it. I fucking knocked you out and choked you out. And you still... <laughs> this guy. That's the most amazing not... thing about you. Hey, hey, hey. I'm not denying it. I know you, you can't see straight, straight, but you obviously can't think straight. See, low blow, Luke. Low blow. That's what you get for low blows. Okay? You got me. I'm not denying that. Hey, the better man won on the night. I'm man enough to admit that. I really am. But guess what? I've wanted the rematch ever since. I haven't lost a fight since. I just beat the greatest of all time. Don't be so cocksure, buddy. The greatest of all time. The greatest of all time. I'll show you who the greatest is right now. You're going to fucking look up your face, pal. Believe you me. Believe you me. Look at you. You're not going to look so smug on Sunday, pal. When you're going back to the rest of your teammates that lost the belts. Come forward and try. You're all going to lose, AK. Are all going to lose all the belts. So fuck you. Bisbee, I'm going to close both those eyes for you. There he is again, see, with the low blows. Any fighters out there, don't talk shit about an injury that happens through fighting. It might happen to you. Oh, Two weeks fucking notice. I'm gonna step oh, off the couch, yeah. drinking fucking beer, man. I'm gonna smash your face in. Yeah. Smash your fucking I'm face. Gonna finish you in the yeah, first yo, round. Yeah, really. So you, you don't can't have just an fuck off. Yeah. Look at you. Come on. I don't want you having an excuse yeah. to just go any further. Hey, hey, dude, 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 dude. Fucking around. Cool. Yeah, you said that last time. You said that last time, motherfucker. Turn to your See you Saturday, everybody. Thank you. You turned to a fucking Hey, let's do it right now, motherfucker. You know, you know. To be honest. I'm sure Luke's a decent guy, but uh, you can see there, see leading up to the fight, he just disparaged my skills so much, you know? And obviously, as a fighter that's dedicated my entire life to fighting, I take that personally. So on this occasion, I was only able to train for one week, so I went in feeling fresh and strong and hungry and itching to get inside that octagon and fight. And I was determined to become the champion of the world. Michael Bisping got the opportunity that he's been campaigning for for a long, long time. Michael Bisping will now challenge for the UFC middleweight championship of the world. Here we go! Good straight left by Rockhold and Bisping counters. He believes the counters and the movement are the key to the victory tonight. You see the difference in this fight here? If you know how I fight, you can see that when I'm swinging my punches, I'm really putting everything into every shot. That was because I knew on looks, you can see I'm really rotating my body into every shot. There it is, boom. Big, big corner with the left! He heard a bad, he heard a bad. And again, Michael Bisping is the new UFG middleweight champion of the world! Goodness. That was easy. That was the easiest fight of my life. Wow. Thank you, everybody. You just said that was the easiest fight of my life and held up his mouthpiece. Incredible. So, yeah, right now, life was good, but this bit here, when my family came in, when my wife and my children, 
You know, that, 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 was, that was huge for me. That's a lifetime sacrifice. That woman there, Rebecca, she gave up her entire life, her hopes and dreams to support mine. And I'll never forget that. Declared the winner by knockout and new undisputed UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael, the Count Bisping. I started fighting when I came out of my mother. Why did I say that? I've been a fighter. It always got me in trouble. But there's nothing I do better in this life than fighting. This woman here supported me every step of the way. If it wasn't for her, my family, my dad, my mother, the support of the UK, everybody here, I could not have done this. I'm an average guy, more than average. This is my dream. Nobody was taking this away from me. Yeah, yeah, pretty uh, special moment. I enjoyed it. I, I feel like the speech wasn't too bad, apart from that one line, you know. What I meant was, since I was born, but still, heat of the moment, just won the title. The, the lights are making you a little dizzy. I misspoke, but uh, yeah, that was certainly, yeah, probably one of the proudest nights of my life, you know, and all that hard work and sacrifice culminated in that, in that one moment, you know. So yeah, that fight, that training camp, that was the easiest of my life. But if it wasn't for all the hard work and sacrifice and blood, sweat and tears that I put in for a lifetime before it, then none of that would have happened. Hey, 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 somebody give me a beer. <laughs> if you can't have a beer when you've just won the world title, when can you have one? Yeah, that was one of the best feelings. You know, you're backstage, you're with your friends, you're with your family. You know, my wife, it supported me from day one. Just incredible. You're wearing that all night, huh? Go on. No, 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 I'll get you off. <laughs> I'm not going to be Tim Sylvia. <laughs> Walk around, go to the club with it on. That was always my dream, from being a little kid, and it was the Rocky movies and like the Ninja movies in the 80s and the Van Damme movies. I, that inspired me and made me want to be a martial artist and want to be a world champion one day. And you do, you see it on TV, you see it in boxing, you see it in UFC, you see it in movies, you know? And I got to live that and, yeah, I'm very proud of it. You know, I've won the belt on a Saturday night and uh, I celebrate like a world champion should. And I'm laid on the couch Monday morning, I'm about to go out for breakfast and I get a phone call from Dana White and Lorenzo Fatita and they offer me a fight with Dan Henderson. Obviously Dan Henderson had just won against Hector Lombard at the weekend and in our first fight, a UFC 100, I was knocked out spectacularly. That always stung a little bit, so of course you want a rematch. Uh, so, so Dana actually offered me a couple of places. He actually said, we're thinking of maybe doing it at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, or we're gonna do it in Manchester. And he asked me, he said, what, where would you rather do it? And I said, it's gonna be Manchester. Manchester's my home city, and yeah, to bring the belt back there as the first ever Brit, you know, to be the champion and to defend it on home soil in my home city, yeah, of course, there was no competition. Another title fight was set. Leaving for the fight. I'm fighting Dan Henderson. Who's going to win? Um, Dan Henderson. Of course. How's Dan Henderson going to win? Um, by Is... knocking you out. <laughs> by knocking me out. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. And Lucas, you know, every time yeah. you've been wrong and I win. I know. You said Anderson Silva was going to win. You said Luke Rockhold was going to win. They all lost, by the way. Just to clarify. <laughs> He's got a great sense of humor. I don't know where he gets it from, but yeah, I love it. I love it that he picks my opponents every time. And I do it on purpose because I know he's gonna say it. I know these idiots online don't understand. I set him up to the camera because I know he's gonna say my opponent and that's what makes it funny. So all you fucking numbskulls out there that don't realize that that's what's going on, please just, just engage your brain a little bit. All right, guys. Well, I guess this is goodbye, everybody. Lucas, you're gonna miss daddy? Ha, ah, the driver shit his pants then when the German Shepherd went running over. Come here, I need cuddles. Five. Big, 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 big cuddles. I love you, buddy. Mm. I just... And he wouldn't give me a kiss either. He's only messing now. Oh my God, love you, sweetheart. You know, this is always the hardest part, saying bye to your family. 
I mean, that's why you fight. You do it for your family, and you gotta leave, you gotta say goodbye and see him on the other side. Who's gonna win? <laughs> I love it. Don't kiss me. Oh, don't worry, pal. I'm gonna kiss you with this. <laughs> what an asshole. Do a few sit-ups, mate. Yeah. This stays right here, pal. <laughs> that was a good one by Dan. Manchester! Let's get things started! The UFC middleweight champion of the world. Good times. I mean, look at that. Amazing. Incredible energy. Thank you, Manchester. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> it's so embarrassing to listen back. Manchester! Who wants to see Hendo get knocked the F out? Manchester, let's fucking do this! What a crowd tonight. This is UFC 204. Bisping versus Henderson. I was a little tense. You know, I was kind of just being a dick with everybody because I was nervous, you know? And then when I got to the arena and you hear the crowds and you hear the cheers and the boos and the oohs and the ahs, and then that spikes your adrenaline a little bit. And then that intensified and I was even being more of an asshole to my corner man. And then I just burst out laughing. I just started laughing and they're like, what, what are you laughing at? And I said, I'm sorry guys. And they're like, sorry for what? I said, I'm being a dickhead here and I know I am. I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna fight. One of us is gonna win, one of us is gonna lose. I've lost before, it's not the end of the world. I'll stop being a dick and uh, try and be, you know, a nice guy. And then from then on there, you know, I, I, I was in a way better mood. Every fight is your next biggest fight. You know, you're only as good as your last fight. You know, of course, I'd beaten Anderson. Then I became the champion. And well, now I've got to defend it. No point winning the belt if you can't defend it. And now I've got to defend it in Manchester against a guy that had already knocked me out in the past and the whole world laughed at me. Oh! And I did feel confident, you know, but it's easy to lie to the fans. It's easy to sit and do, you know, interviews with the press and use bravado and make out like you're going to win. But you can't lie to yourself, you know. And I tried to lie to myself, but I couldn't. I kept thinking, last time I stepped into an octagon with that guy, I was put to sleep. Yeah. Ah! It was a big, big event. All right, mate. The fight was at 6 a.m. Okay. The big ask for anybody to go watch a sporting event at that time. Three, two, one. middleweight champion of the world, Manchester Zone, Michael Bisping. I knew a lot of people were coming to see me defend my title. I don't want people to go home disappointed. I want to give them what they came to see. So that adds a lot of extra pressure. Here we go! Yeah, I mean, it was clear from the start I had a speed advantage. And to be honest, a skill advantage as well. But Henderson, very, very dangerous with that right hand. Excellent idea if he wants to draw out the jab of Michael Bisping and then uncork that right hand. Just misses there. Swing and a miss. He built a career on that right hand. And the whole game plan was, of course, not to get caught with the right hand. But as my old boxing coach used to say, can't go in the rain without getting wet. Oh, he's back! The right hand again! Henderson! Looking for the finish! Henderson hits hard, and he put me down there. But to be honest, that one was different. UFC 100, I didn't know what was going on. This one here, I was still there. I still knew what was going on. I'm still fighting, as you can see. And I managed to get myself back to the, to the feet. But, uh, ah! Not before I took some damage, of course. Wiped the blood from my face. I think I gave him a little smile. Said, come on, let's go. Yeah, that was big for him. The left eye of Bisping right where Henderson wants to put that right hand. I mean, yeah, if you see that, that left eye is a mess. I, I only have one good eye. And as the fight was progressing, that eye was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 
Nicely done. That rocked him. Very nice. Striking, looking sharp. Just too fast for him, to be honest. You know, but Henderson's a veteran. He's very good. You know, he was looking for the opening. He was looking for my reads, trying to see what he would give me. But yeah, I was happy with my performance. The fight going as I thought it would, picking him apart, using the jab, using the jab to set everything up nicely, mixing in kicks here and there. He rocked him. Here we see he was hurt, putting him under a lot of pressure, but I got a little too overzealous. Oh my! Oh. Again with the right! Chased after him and once again, but catches me with that right hand, fair play to him. But again, I was able to get guard. This time I knew what was going on. I took the punch a lot better. And again, there is a little narrative out there that people like to say that, oh, Henderson was robbed in that fight. I am sorry. You cannot win a 25 minute fight by landing two good punches. And there it is, using that jab just nice in and out. I mean, you gotta respect Dan. Dan is tough. Oh, there it is again. Timing that right. That time Michael was able to get out of harm's way more. For all the shit I talk, and I'm only messing around. I, you know, I have respect for Dan. Third round was a better round, obviously. Had it got dropped. But if you see that eye, he started to get bigger and bigger. Here we are in fourth round now. Still working behind that jab. You see Henderson's looking for that right hand. And he just kind of clipped me with it there, but not landing it flush, obviously. Both of us slowing down here. Chopping away with that inside leg kick. Five minutes remain. Now we're in round five. I remember at one point my right eye had now had swollen up so much I couldn't see out of that eye either. I just had like a little slit of vision. So if I looked directly ahead, I couldn't see Dan. But if I moved around a little bit, I could just see him ever so slightly. And look at the right hand. inside. 145. The knee. There's a nice flying knee that connected. Dan Anderson goes for some weird Hail Mary thing here in a minute. I'm not sure what this is. They go the distance! I was confident. I knew I'd won this fight. I knew I deserved to win this fight. Judges score the contest. 48-47. 48-47. And 49-46 for the winner by unanimous decision. And still! bottom of my heart. I mean that. I'm not being cheesy. Thank you all so much. Rebecca, Calamelli, Lucas, I love you. And that felt good. It felt great, obviously, for all the people from the UK that came to support me, that came out at that crazy time in the morning to defend the belt in my home city. I was so proud. So proud beyond belief. And it's a memory I'll take to my grave. Remember how you used to always pick the opponent to win? Yeah. <laughs> if I was to ask you who's going to win, Dad or Luke Rockholds, who would you say? I would say Luke Rockhold because it's in the rule book. Because it's in the rule book? Is there anything else you want to say? Thank you for always trying your best for the family. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Never go on your dad's side. And it makes me really proud that he achieved that because I know he's been working towards that his entire life. And I remember like the next day at school, my teacher, she had no idea that was my dad and she had watched it and she saw me there like in the Oxygen. So yeah, that was pretty crazy. I would just like to say thank you for all the sacrifices you've made throughout your entire life just to give me and our family an amazing and great life and a bright future. Thank you, Ellie. You know, if I'm ever feeling down or, you know, been feeling beat up, I'm not feeling motivated, I think, okay, I can give that a little bit more because he did that for us. He did that to, uh, to provide us a better life and to, uh, you know, set us up for success. So. Um, if I could say anything to him, I would just say thank you for um, working so hard for us, being so selfless, being so, um, you know, hardworking just to, uh, to give us more opportunities in life and to give us uh, a good future. So 
Yeah, just thank you. Thank you, really. Thank you for everything. Thank you just for making life so good. And just, uh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, 2016 was a uh, quite a ridiculous year. Um, and I'm saying that for all the, uh, the very best reasons. Um, basically, it was uh, your crazy work ethic, your drive and determination. It all seemed to come together and make for an extremely successful year. We made some amazing memories together as a family, memories we will never forget. It felt good. Um, that was an amazing year. When we embarked on this journey together, you and me, um, I don't think either of us could have um, known what the future held. We were delving into the unknown and um, I think it's pretty safe to say it's exceeded all of our expectations. We're truly living the dream and it's all down to you. Thank you for being you because you make us laugh every single day and you light up our lives and I want to say that I love you very much and I will love you forever. <laughs> Sons of bitches. <laughs> um, no, it's beautiful. Thank you. And that's why I do it, you know. Everyone has a skill in this life. And for me, it was fighting. You know, I've always been able to fight. And I sat down and I thought about it long and hard. And I thought, how can I turn this skill of fighting into giving my family the life I always wanted for them? It was never easy. And there was a lot of sacrifice. I used to sleep in my car. And we used to go broke. And we used to argue about money. You know, because when you start off as a fighter, it's the lowest of the low. You fight for nothing, you're fighting for peanuts. And, but you're still going to train the same as what you would be doing if it was a world title fight. The whole time, my wife and my children, they're still broke, they're still poor. My, my wife is still the one suffering, but I'm chasing my dreams. So for me, it was easy for her. She sacrificed more than me. So the fact that she stuck by me throughout all that time, I'll never forget it. And that's why I always say, if it wasn't for my wife or my kids, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. So thank you all for the kind words, but truly, the thanks, you know, is from me to you guys. I love you all, and this is why I do it. And if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here right now. 2016 was the culmination of a lifetime's hard work. When I was a kid, you know, I never really had much opportunity in front of me. And a lot of people out there are probably in a similar scenario right now. But if you think and you're willing to put the hard work in and make the sacrifices, then you can make it work and you can turn it around. I mean, look at me, you know, I was at rock bottom, but then with the help of a good woman and some beautiful children and some hard work and opportunity from the UFC, I turned it all around. And in 2016, I realized a lifelong dream of beating Anderson Silva. I became the champion of the world. I defended the belt in my hometown city. And this is at a time when a lot of people asked me to retire. That literally is the stuff of childhood dreams. Yeah, I'm very, very proud of what I achieved in 2016.